Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, 3D Modeling for Animation um, for the Fall Semester 2021. Um, anyway, <clears throat> today we've already been uh, looking at a couple of video tutorials that I've made available for you on my um, uh, YouTube playlist for 3D, uh, Lightwave 3D um, videos. Um, in addition to that, what I want to show you is uh, a couple of new tools. One is the seashell tool. Um, I tried to show that to you before and I was having issues with it and I don't know why. It's a very simple tool to use. Um, for example, though, it is not under the box, the ball, the disc, and it's not under more. There's a bunch of them that we could look at. Um, for example, I don't know that I've showed you gears before. I don't know what I've showed, shown you um, how to use the gemstone. There's a bunch of them here that are unique primitive shapes that are worth looking at. What we need right now is just the disc tool for right now. And <clears throat> I have everything centered up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and over to the left, I'm going to click and drag <clears throat> and make a little disc here. Okay, I can increase or decrease the size of that. And it's just off center, just a tad. How much I might need to go back and change it, we'll see. So there we have it. And if I need to change it, I could go ahead and I could um, flip the surface normal. But right now you can see that it's offside a little bit. Now, <clears throat> to use the seashell tool, it's not, as I said, it's not here under the Create tab, it's under the Multiply tab. And where you will find that, again, is under More. And More, again, and it's down here under Seashell. So we have over here in our um, Numeric Requester, I'm going to go ahead and activate. And it did work, maybe because I was playing with it before. But it didn't do that before. So we have a number of options available to us. Right now, the axis is set to Y because I want it to go up. If I set it to, <clears throat> to X, you can see what it's doing. It's really you know, taking that disk and doing some wild things to it. If I were to do Z, um, again, you can see what kind of you know, surface it makes or what kind of object it makes. I want ours to be um, the Y axis, and we can control the number of loops. You know, if I want it right now, by default, it's set to four. Um, I don't want it set to 25. It doesn't need to be set so many. Um, let's go ahead and just set it maybe to six, see how that works for us. Um, um, sides per loop, I will increase the, the number of sides so we don't see these segments along the side here. But what I want to do here, shift per loop, it's set for one. Watch what happens when I go ahead and I change this. So now this is a way of getting a little corkscrew if I want. Okay. If I want this to be pinched up like that, and maybe I want the scale to change a little bit, it's set to 0.6. If I were to go all the way up to one, watch what happens. That doesn't work for us. So I'm gonna go to 0.5. Okay, so you can see that there are really subtle, subtle changes. I'm gonna change it from 0.5 back to 0.6. And let's go ahead and make it 0.7. And that works pretty well for us, OK? So that's it. We have a little seashell kind of tool. Uh, maybe six loops was too much. Maybe I can go back and try five. Um, let's go back to four again, which was the default number. And you can see that. It doesn't quite go all the way to the top when I do that. So maybe I do need to go back up to six. There we go. So if I want, let's go ahead and also let's change the number of sides. And by doing that, you can see in the, um, 
the shaded view or the textured view that it smooths out a tad. So that's looking pretty good. So there we have it. There's the, the seashell tool. Now, one of the things that I played with before is that, you know, seashells don't have um, a closed end like this. They are open-ended. So what I chose to do once this was done, let's go ahead and turn off seashell so that that's now fixed, is that I chose to take the end cap here. So let's make sure that I have polygon selected. And I selected the polygon at the very end here. Come on. Why aren't you selecting? There we go. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. Is that I killed it. Okay. So that gives me a hollow. But that doesn't help. If I wanted to keep it thin, and this is going to be shown from a distance, then I could leave it that way. But if it were going to be a, a relatively close up, object, maybe what I would need to do is to go ahead and give it some thickness. So again, under multiply, we can go ahead and use thicken. Okay, And I can come in here and I can click and drag and pull that in just a little bit to give it some thickness. And that helps us a lot. Okay, So now let's change that considerably. So now you can actually see into it and we have some thickness. The other thing that we can try to do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tab key and it shows an error because I have probably um, uh, polys that it exceed the four point limit. Let's see what it does. But it's actually working out okay for us. Okay. Now, probably what I did, I didn't need the number the six. The reason that this is changing like this is that I should have made the disk closer to the, the zero. I pulled it too far away, so as it loops around, um, needed, didn't need to be that far from the center. So there's our seashell. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you that I may have already shown you is the spiky tool. And again, these are really unusual tools that um, you may or may not ever need. But again, remember that when you do that, when you use it, in fact, let me do the. Um, once again, I'm going to go ahead and select the disk. Let's go ahead and activate. And I'm going to move it over this time. So, so it's not, doesn't have as much distance to travel. And I'm going to try that again. Let's go ahead and um, see what I get. Is that, remember, it doesn't have to be, you know, they don't have to overlap. So you, if you were wanting a corkscrew effect, this would be ideal. And you can, again, change the, um, the degree of, of scale. Um, see how that works. This is basically a lathe and you know tool is what it is. So let's go back under multiply. And let's go to um, what was it under more more again. Let's go back to seashell. And let's go ahead and activate. There you go. So notice that that looks a little bit different than what I had before. It went back to the Settings of four. Let's make sure that that's set to four. Okay. But we don't have um, choice in here of how much it actually, uh, we, you know, change the distance, the radius. So that was that. Let me go ahead and undo. And let's go back again and I'm going to undo that. Um, what I want to do is that I said I was going to show you the spiky tool. So to do that, I want to start with something very simple. And I want to start with a ball. So let's go ahead and create, reset a ball and activate. Um, I don't know that I want so many sides. We could leave it at that, but I'm going to make it 12. Okay. 
shrink it down a bit. And let's zoom in a tad so we can see this. Um, we don't have um, four pointed polys or quads at the top, um, but it will still work along here. It works best, the spiky tool with quads. So again, I need to go to multiply and I need to go under more and more again and spiky tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and activate. And you can see how it's changing the, um, the quads and it's subdividing them and creating a little point in the middle. And now I can change the spike factor. And now when I increase this, like so, now if I only had one or two polys selected, you can see the result that I would get. But right now, because I had no poly selected, it affects them all. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And now watch what happens when I hit the tab key. Okay. Um, interesting effects. Okay. That significantly changes the... <clears throat> the geometry of everything. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, was most important was to make sure that you got the seashell to work. And again, I also encourage you to go back under the Create tab and under all of the, the primitives, check out some of these others here, like the gear tool. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and do that since I've got your... Um, you here, let's go ahead and try it. I'm gonna go ahead under more. And let's try under gears. And again, you can choose how many teeth you want. You can choose the taper. You can choose the inner radius, outer radius, um, and you can choose the axis. So I'm gonna select D or Z by default, and I'm just gonna leave all the default settings just to see what I have here. And now let's zoom out a little bit. And uh, and there is my gear. Um, that could be achieved other ways, but you know why? Um, the same with some other tools that, that we have in here. Um, if I wanted to, you know, if you're into gems and that sort of thing, again, we could go in here and instead of we have multiple gears, we have um, gemstone. And I believe I've shown all of you this before. I'm going to go ahead and activate. Okay. But it's worth repeating now at the end of the semester is that, again, you can determine the axis of this. That's the first thing. You can determine the center. Right now, everything is centered, zero, zero, zero. You can control the radius and you know just use the spinners to see the effects that each of these um, has. I can control the symmetry. Okay. I can control the crown. You know, what is the crown? That's the top. We can control the girdle. You know, do I want to add a little bit to the girdle? Do I want to control the table? Is it pinch at the top or is it rounded? And can I control the pavilion? Come to a sharp point, you know, they all, well, they both do, but is it elongated or is it shortened? And again, if I, you know, get lost, just go back and reset and it goes back to the default settings. I can come back under more and turn off gemstone and I'm done. And then you can apply, you know, your surface to it. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm at uh, you know almost the eleven o'clock hour, so I showed you some videos um, that I thought would be useful. I, I I collect these all the time and watch them again and again to get ideas um, and review for myself various ways of modeling, surfacing, that sort of thing. There's a couple more that I want to show you how to match perspective with a background for example, 
you know, make sure that your model matches the perspective that's in the background. Um, that's one of the things. There's there's a variety of things that I still would like to show all of you before the semester ends. Um, next week is Thanksgiving, and then after Thanksgiving, we only have a couple weeks left. So, um, if you haven't got gotten started on your final project, I encourage you to um, get to work on it. Um, remember, it needs to be fairly ambitious. It's um, your choice of what you want to do. Um, it can be simple or complex, but it needs to be kind of a robust, finished, very finished look. So not only am I, will, will, will I be looking at the modeling, but I will be looking at the surfacing, the lighting, the staging, how you've composed your scene. Um, and also, in addition to that, um, you will be responsible for doing two renders at the very end of different angles. One could be, um, you know, uh, move the camera. You could have multiple cameras uh, from different points of view. You can also have a close-up shot and a very detailed shot if you take, spent a lot of time on a particular part of a model that you want to showcase. And then you could also have an overview um, of the model itself. So that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. I'm going to pause my recording. And um, that will be it for today. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye.